Hello, this is James from Neoterix. This week's video is an overview of the published immunoassay methods where researchers have combined the benefits of sampling with Mitra and the security of a validated controlled laboratory test. On the 10th of April 2020, the NIH announced a serology surveillance study looking at the natural immunity of the SARS-CoV-2 virus of up to 10,000 volunteers. They announced in their press release that these samples will be collected at home using the Mitra microsampler and posted back to the NIH labs for serology testing using in-house ELISA. Also, during this time, institutions such as the University of San Diego and the University of Rochester Medical Center have also embarked on similar studies using immunoassays. Moreover, globally, there is a huge interest in onboarding Mitra for sample collection for such assays. Published in 2019, Dr. Zand's group at the University of Rochester Medical Center developed a multiplex immunoassay to detect over 30 strains of flu on Mitra using a Luminex-based multiplex immunoassay. Samples were taken by trained phlebotomists and compared to samples sent in from home. The concordance between the results was impressive and showed good stability of immunoglobulins on 10 microliter tips. Extraction from Mitra was straightforward. The devices were soaked in a mixture of PBS, BSA and tween and shaken overnight before final dilution and testing. Actually, recently published on the Medical Center's blog site, the same group are now embarking on testing for SARS-CoV-2 virus immunity using Mitra Home Collection Kits. Over the last three years, researchers in Amsterdam have successfully developed extraction methodology for seven monoclonal antibody drugs from Mitra. They saw quantitative recoveries for all drugs and one month stability at room temperature as well as two days at 37 degrees C. Similarly reported in the Fluplex paper from Rochester, Extraction off Mitra was carried out overnight in PBS and tween, but in this case, sodium azide was added too. With the resulting extracts were analyzed using ELISA or radio immunoassay, depending upon which MAB was being tested. Indeed, in a subsequent paper, the same group then conducted a clinical bridging study on IBD patients taking in Flixi MAB. Very good concordance was seen between Mitra samples being sent in from home compared to venous samples collected in the clinic. Continuing the uh, monoclonal antibody theme, in 2018, Dr. Lee and colleagues published a preclinical pharmacokinetic study of two monoclonal antibody therapies. As in the previous MAB studies, excellent extraction efficiency was observed from Mitra, leading to very good PK data. In fact, the paper concluded the Mitra microsampling results were equivalent to those derived from serum and liquid whole blood sampling. Interestingly, the same extraction procedure required just an hour's shake in PBS before extraction on ELISA plates. Recently, Dr. Lee has been interviewed by Bioanalysis Journal regarding the role of patient-centric sampling with a COVID-19 epidemic. This is an excerpt of what she had to say on the topic. With the sensitivity and precision of today's ELISAs, Typically, only a small amount of human whole blood is needed to perform an antibody test. In addition, when using microsampling techniques like Mitra, blood samples can be collected non-invasively by the volunteers themselves, rather than having to go to a medical office to have the blood drawn. Use of the Mitra microsampling device has the advantage of being able to ship blood samples by regular mail, as opposed to by biohazard designation and temperature requirements typically in place for traditional blood sampling techniques. Back in 2017, researchers at the CDC successfully developed a method for detecting saxitoxin from Mitra samples using ELISA. And they observed that stability was within the acceptance criteria for 21 days. During the sample processing, Mitra samples were removed from the sampler bodies and dropped into the wells of the ELISA plate. Enzyme conjugate and polyclonal antibody serum was then dispensed into each well. The plate was shaken for one hour before being washed and exposed to substrate solution. Endogenous compounds can also be measured on Mitra using ELISA and immunoassay. In this example, IGF-1, a predicate biomarker for growth hormone, was successfully measured from Mitra extracts. 
The best extraction protocol was found to be one hour incubation in 0.9% sodium chloride solution before transferring to ELISA. Furthermore, researchers at Swansea University have successfully developed an assay on Mitra to measure C-peptide, a biomarker which measures beta cell function. They compared both ELISA and a radio immunoassay and showed very favorable results. In both cases, Mitra tips were removed from their sample bodies and added to a mini spin column. For chemiluminescent immunoassay, antibody conjugate was added as extractant and for ELISA, assay buffer was added. Again, on an, an hour shake was all that was required to dissolve the dried blood before immunoassay. If you would like to examine these methods in more detail or obtain links to the original research papers, then we've prepared a review document, which you can download from the COVID-19 resources page from the Neoterix website. I hope this brief overview has been useful. Many thanks for listening.